Generic archetypes two, simpler frequently recurring structures. In the in generic archetypes one, I presented sort of an idea of where these structures came from, how Eric Wolstenholme initially developed them, and the sense of of this generic solution archetype and how it mapped to the archetypes presented in in Senge's The Fifth Discipline. Here, I'd, li- I'd like to go ahead and, and investigate each of the the four generic archetypes in a bit more detail. If we start with the underachievement archetype, given this situation, the action is intended to produce an outcome which promotes more of the same action. It's a it's a virtuous reinforcing structure where we take action to produce an outcome, and as a result, that outcome simply encourages us to do more of the same. The difficulty is that that, that outcome, after some delay, typically produces a result which then hinders further development of the outcome that we were seeking. So it's a B2 um, produces a stagnating um, balancing loop that limits the extent to which we can accomplish what we're setting out to accomplish. The approach to dealing with this is to figure out how to tie the action to some resource so that that the action, in addition to to producing the outcome we wanted, it also develops a resource that diminishes the reaction that would at, would further hinder the development of the outcome. So we then produce a a virtuous reinforcing structure because there's two uh, opposite reaction relationships here, so that this reinforcing structure, virtuous, then actually ends up overcoming the stagnating balancing structure, and we can continue to pursue the outcome that we're looking for. And this structure typically maps to these five five archetypes. And if you click the links here, uh, each one of them, each link will take you to the typical archetype so that you can... um, investigate or compare this structure with the structure of the typical archetype. The next one, the out-of-control structure, uh, given a, a problem situation, we take action to to diminish the problem. The, prob- the problem actually promotes us to take action, and the action diminishes the problem. We're trying to get it to go away. This is essentially a a goal-seeking structure. The difficulty here is that that action promotes some reaction that after some delay actually exacerbates the problem, further promoting more action on our part, and we end up with a a vicious reinforcing structure that that getting us further and further away from solving the problem itself. And the appropriate response here is to develop some sort of a solution link so that there's a link from the problem that actually diminishes that reaction and it ends up as a stabilizing balancing loop so that by the problem diminishing this reaction, it diminishes the problem and it helps us move in a direction that we really want to go. And this structure maps to to these five typical archetypes. The relative achievement archetype begins with another reinforcing loop where the A's action to create advantage creates a a relative outcome for A, which promotes more of the same action. And from A's perspective, this is a virtuous reinforcing structure. The difficulty that arises is that that relative outcome for A diminishes the outcome for B, and by diminishing it, it then uh, furthers the relative outcome for A, so that this is essentially a success to the successful structure 
so that as A creates a relative outcome for itself and promotes its own outcome, it's sort of um, all for one and none for all, so that whoever gets there first wins. The approach to dealing with this structure is to figure out how to get the relative outcome for A to promote some regulation so that regulation limits A's action so that there's an ex a limit or an extent to which A can actually act to its own advantage. So you then end up with uh, a stabilizing balancing loop, but B3. And this, this maps to, this, as I said, the success to the successful structure. The final generic archetype is called relative control archetype. And it begins with a situation where A's action for control promotes a relative outcome for A, which then diminishes further action. This is a, a stabilizing balancing loop. It might also be stagnating, depending upon uh, the extent to which it ends up limiting it. So the outcome for this is that the relative outcome for A after some delay promotes B's reaction to compromise the outcome, therefore diminishing the relative outcome for A. So in response to A actually acting on its own behalf, B acts to counter that. And the two balancing loops actually end up creating a vicious reinforcing loop so that if you follow the sequence this way, it's actually a reinforcing structure. It's a figure eight. And it's typical of an escalation structure. And the way to deal with this is that rather than allow A to be unlimited, you figure out what the absolute target is and the absolute outcome so that A's action promotes an outcome that then, when it compares to the absolute target, ends up diminishing A's activity to control itself. And you end up with B3, which is a stabilizing balancing loop. And this maps to these five traditional or typical archetypes. So part of the reason that I'm a, I'm a day or two later with this than I thought I was going to have it done is because um, these initial models were created in Insight Maker before there was storytelling, so there was no way to unfold them. I had to go develop the storytelling. and But the major problem was my understanding of the generic archetypes was not what I thought it was, and as I attempted to work through them, there were a number of the relationships which I simply couldn't sort out in my head. So in the in the links associated with this musing is the link that was in the previous musing, which is Wollstenholm's uh, published paper about this, though thanks to Jeff McDonald digging up into his own archives, he found me this article that Eric also did, which... Is, is a nice description, and, and it actually walks through how the individual structures operate, which I found sorted out the difficulty I had in my own mind. And there's a companion paper, which are the loops that he talks about in this paper. I don't know why the loops aren't in the paper, but there are two different papers, so that it talks about a problem and a solution archetypes, and then it walks through the the four types that I talked about, and then it goes into some detail about mapping them against the typical limits to success, tragedy of commons archetypes. So um, that's it. The um, and you know I I think I'm going to have to spend some time and get used to thinking in terms of the generic archetypes, though my first thought is I like them far better than all the other ones because there's only four. And I will go back to some of my earlier 
models that I've developed and see if I can identify these generic archetypes in the models and see what it does in terms of helping me understand them. So sorry this is much longer than I like to have videos be, but it is what it is. So take care. Bye.